so one of the reasons why you want to go with a gear like a 430 obviously for doing burnouts so uh see what she'll do More power. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and yet another installment on the ugly truck, my 2000 Chevy Silverado. Today is all about vibration and how to stop it. Now, I lowered this truck and re-geared it and since then, two things have happened. Number one, the drive shaft is now spinning a lot faster because we went from a 342 to a 430. So to maintain the same road speed, your drive shaft is spinning a lot faster. And as a result, I've noticed a pretty big increase in vibration. Also, not to mention, this truck is lowered. It's four inches lower in the back than it was previously. That changes the drive shaft angles. And when you combine that with a different gear ratio, well, it throws all kinds of stuff out of whack. And I've been getting a vibration roughly around 75 miles an hour. And the faster you go, the worse it gets. Now, a couple of uh, disclaimers. Number one, the drive shaft in this truck other than the yoke and u-joint that i swapped to do the 4l80 conversion is original and it has a ton of miles on it so the center carrier support bearing is really really shot and really really loose and i think a lot of the vibration is coming from that support bearing so today i'm going to be rebuilding the drive shaft and replacing the bearing but along the way i'm also going to be changing out the tail housing bushing on the transmission sort of as a just in case measure and also i've already done this but i'm just going to kind of show you guys some of the changes i've made to the driveline angle to correct it and bring everything in line but i'm going to start by swapping out the tail housing So earlier I removed the original tail housing from the 4L80E and the whole purpose was to replace this guy right here, the tail housing bushing. Now I didn't really think it was all that bad, but like I said, this was kind of just as a just in case measure. I want to make sure everything is up to snuff. So I don't know how long this had been in there because remember this is a used transmission. Not to mention the rear output seal on the transmission had leaked quite badly. So I just wanted to start over. I went down to my local Coleman Taylor transmission in Franklin, Tennessee, bunch of great guys down there. And I went in and I asked them, can you just press in and out this old bushing? They said, sure thing. They got me right in there. They pressed the old one out and come to find out there are actually two different sizes of bushings for a 4L ADE. I didn't know this, but the one that they had, the bushing rather, was a little bit different size and just fit a little bit too loose into my existing tail housing. Now, luckily, they just happened to have another replacement tail housing, and it already had a brand new bushing loaded up. So all they did was press in a brand new seal for me and sent me on my way. So now I'm just going to load this thing up underneath the truck, and then we'll move on to the drive shaft. Like a lot of vehicles with a longer wheelbase, this one has a drive shaft that's made from two pieces. There's a front shaft, a carrier bearing in the middle, and then the rear yoke, which goes on to the rear differential. Now, the whole purpose of a carrier bearing is basically to make the second half of the drive shaft nice and stable, because otherwise it'd just be kind of flopping around and there'd be nothing to hold it, well, exactly where it needs to be. Now, remember, I've said this a million times, but this truck has 326,000 miles on it. And as far as I know, this is the original carrier bearing, and these are the original U-joints in this original drive shaft. Now, I did already replace the front yoke and the front universal joint way back when I swapped to the 4L80 because it's a different spline output from the 4L60 that I had replaced. However, the carrier bearing in the center, this thing is pretty sloppy, and I think this is the main contributor to the vibration that this truck is having. Let me just kind of show you what I mean. Um, the rubber is basically deteriorated to the point where the drive shaft can be moved all around and it's not held firmly in place. The new replacement carrier bearing, basically there's, I think when they make this, they just kind of either inject rubber in after the fact or something. But anyway, the, the bearing is just super tight and it's held nice and firmly in rubber in this bracket. So 
the very first thing that we got to do is take these two halves of the shaft apart so I can press on the new bearing. This certainly ranks in one of the top three sketchiest ways that I've ever had to use the shot press. Because of the length of the front drive shaft, I have to raise the press up off the ground so I have enough free space to work. And I ended up having to use a pair of melt crates and a length of 4x6 lumber. Now the bearing actually comes apart in two separate pieces. The way I was able to rig it the first time, only the outer retainer of the bearing pressed off by deforming the rubber. But the second time around, I was able to get a little bit better purchase with the bearing splitter so I could pull the whole thing off in one go. It does take quite a bit of pressure, but when it finally does let go, it'll let you know with a nice big bang. So I can't actually use the shot press to reinstall the new bearing because the throat of the press would have to be, you know, four and a half, five feet deep because there's really no good way to grip onto the shaft. So instead, I'm just going to drive it on with a hammer. But you do have to be very careful about where you are driving from. Now, with the bearing, you basically have to drive from the inner surface. That's the part that actually grips onto the shaft and it has a slight interference fit. If you were just kind of pounding randomly anywhere from the outside, you are going to damage the bearing. So I happen to have just, this is really the only thing I had sitting around that will work. It's a piece of inch and five eighths header tube, or it might be inch and three quarter, but basically it's the perfect diameter to go in and it sits exactly on that inner race surface and it's long enough to stick out beyond the spline end of the shaft. So I'll slide the bearing on and I just hit this thing with a hammer a couple times until it's driven all the way home. I feel pretty dumb right now because I actually set up a really nice lockdown shot showing me pounding the bearing onto the shaft. But when the important time came to hit the red button, well, I didn't do it, so I don't have that footage to show you. However, I did set up a shot quickly afterwards just to kind of show the process of where you hit and how it works to get the bearing onto the drive shaft. Now you do have to use a fair amount of force. This is, I think, 16 gauge header tube, and as you can see, it's a little bit deformed on the end. But this is the safest way to use a hammer to drive that bearing onto the shaft because the bearing remains perfectly intact and there's no damage that was done. So now from here, I've got to rebuild the back half of the drive shaft, which basically is just putting new U-joints in. However, there's two things to keep in mind when you're rebuilding a drive shaft, or well, working with any drive shaft for that matter, and that's just mark your orientation. There's three different places where you can twist the shaft around, and if you get it lined up in the wrong spot, well, your U-joints could be out of phase and the drive shaft will be out of balance. So I made a mark on the front of the middle slip yoke, another mark here to show the orientation between this yoke and this shaft, and then finally you have another mark on the rear yoke where it goes into the rear of the differential. Again, that's just important to make sure all the shafts stay in phase and basically also stay in balance. Now, these U-joints are held in with plastic. From the factory, you can kind of see these little white little tabs sticking out. They put the U-joint together and they inject hot nylon with high pressure into the yoke of the drive shaft. And that nylon cools down and holds everything nicely in place. So my process, pretty simple. Use a small propane torch, heat it up until you see the nylon start to shoot out. Then you can drive the old U-joints out, put the new one in, obviously keeping everything in line. And then the drive shaft is ready to go back underneath the truck.
When I first lowered this truck, the kit came with a carrier bearing relocation bracket, which moved the bearing up about three inches. Now that was supposed to correct the driveline angles, but I think it was more intended to be used with a rear flip kit or even more of an extreme drop because the angles that it created were kind of all over the place. Now I think you're supposed to have an operating angle somewhere around three degrees between the two joints. This one was way beyond that. The transmission pointed downhill, the first shaft pointed uphill, second shaft downhill, and this was almost flat. But the operating angles that it created, 5.4 degrees, 4.1, and 2.9. And like I said, I think that was also a big contributor to the vibration that I was experiencing. So I cut up and I modified the carrier bearing bracket and I brought it down about an inch and a half or halfway between where it started and where it was. And that little bit of difference actually made a pretty big improvement on the measured angle. So transmission obviously still points downhill. The front shaft now points downhill a little bit and the rear shaft is more or less flat. But the angles 3.2 degrees, 0.3 and 0.7. Now like I said I think you're supposed to have three or less and the front one is just a little bit outside that but I think when I combine the improved angles with the new carrier bearing, new universal joints, and the new bushing inside the tail shaft, I think, or at least I hope, that the vibration will be more or less gone. But hey, there's only one way to find out, right? So let's go for a drive. Here we go. All right, that's floorboarded right there. Shifts first to second at 45 miles an hour. Still has pretty long legs in second gear. There's 75, 80, and much, much smoother. All that work on the drive shaft definitely paid off. Correcting the angles, you know, raising the carrier bearing up, changing the differential, making those angles much closer to three instead of five, and then putting the new carrier bearing in. I mean, way, way smoother. Before, when I would like get on it like this, and that pinion kind of wants to climb up, it would just vibrate almost to the point where you could feel it, you know, hear it and feel it. Um, but now, so much better, so much better. I'm glad I took the time to rebuild the drive shaft. Okay, so I gotta say there is a huge improvement on how this truck drives simply by swapping the gears. I did it a couple of videos back, but I haven't really given you guys a full review of what it's like to daily drive this thing with 430s in it. First of all, I basically gotta say it's pretty freaking awesome. It had 342s before this, and getting off the line, this thing was a dog. It did 60 miles an hour in first gear before it shifted, and it just had no power. It still has no power, of course, because the engine's stock, but the 430s, it really gives the truck some leverage and it helps it get off the line. So acceleration and response, well, it is greatly improved. So let's see, I am maintaining exactly 70 miles an hour right now, 2,500 RPM, so not too bad. Let's bring it up to 75. Still pretty smooth, no real vibrations. About 2600 RPM or so. I mean, you could drive there all day long. Wouldn't hurt a thing. So it's getting to be that time again, and I gotta say thank you guys for stopping by and watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please subscribe and click that like button. I got a few more parts on order and then the big decision. I got to figure out what engine we're going to stick under the hood of this truck. Yeah, it's got a 5.3. We might build that up a little bit at first, but sooner or later, I am going to be replacing this with something else. I just don't know what yet. So if you have any suggestions, feel free to drop a comment down below. But until next time, I'm LT.